Okay. So, um, just to get started, uh, again, as always, the world champion is uh, the St. Petersburg State University <coughs> of Fine Mechanics and Optics. They changed their names recently, but I like the old name because I always thought it was funny that a mechanics university would win. Um, so it might be interesting just to take a look for people to uh, see. Stony Brook did not do all that well, quite frankly, but we got a, uh, I guess, as always, we're with honorable mention with everybody at the bottom. Um, but uh, one of the things that's interesting that, that always hurts our team when we go to the finals is that uh, we're at the same table because we're Stony Brook. We're at the same table with these people and these people and also sometimes these people. And so, uh, so all, when, when, when you get a problem right, they give you a team a balloon. So you're sitting at this table and all these other super teams are getting all these balloons and you're getting just mistakes and you get very frustrated. But anyway, so these were the final results. Um, I guess Tinghua represents the Asian champion this time. Um, Shanghai Zhaodong had a bad year. They, they, they have been good in past years. And not a bad year, but uh, they, fell, they fell back a little bit. But, um, and, and Fudan University, where I will be going in a week and a half, okay, did, did, did pretty well, okay? So uh, we'll point that out. I mentioned that I'm going to Fudan University, actually, now just to mention one thing. Remind me that next week we're going we're to rearrange our, a little bit the weeks of activities. Next week we are not going to do the grids problems but we're going to do the geometry first problems. Okay, so if you look at my book, I'm reversing the next two chapters for reasons related to my visit. Okay? Any questions about this? If we have time, I may take a look at one of the, uh, what you call it, we may want to look at one of the problems there on the world finals. But I'd rather talk about the problems that we have here until we uh, get any further on that. Any questions about dynamic programming? or anything else, in abstract, or anything like that before we get, get going. Okay, so let's talk about the, um, the problems. I guess the first problem was the is bigger, smarter problem. Let's go back to that one here. Um, who, want, who Okay, first of all, how many people have done all four of the dynamic programming problems? You two. How many people have done three of them? How many people have done two of them? I see one, two. How many people have done one of them? How many people have done none of them? Okay. And if the none of them, is that because you didn't get started or because you've had a roadblock? Haven't started, haven't started. Okay. So let's take a look at it. Somebody uh, tell me, let's say not a usual party. Why don't you come and tell me about, uh, did you do this one? It's bigger, smarter? Okay. So tell me about this problem. Okay, so you would like to try to find a collection of, a, 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 you're, you're given a set of elephants, okay? And each elephant has a size and an IQ, okay? And what you want to do is to find a, <clears throat> an order of increasingly, what is it, larger but dumber elephants? Is that what we want? What does it say here? We want larger but dumber elephants. So the sizes are going to go like this, and the brains, which we'll draw like this, is an elephant brain. Elephant brains are going to keep getting smaller. Does everybody see that? That's right of what you want. Okay? Now, how do you do this as a dynamic programming problem? Okay? Any ideas? What is the, what is the, what is the step to think about this one as? Okay. Any ideas about how you think about it? Let me tell you why this might not initially look like dynamic programming. Okay. What what is the argument here that uh, that it might not be dynamic programming? It is dynamic programming, but there is one 
semi-intelligent argument that it might not be dynamic programming. And what is that? Well, the way I think about it is dynamic programming requires things that are ordered from left to right. In principle, you're given just arbitrary pairs of elephants, right? You're giving a set of things, normally asking for a subset of things unless they are ordered from left to right, okay? You're not going to be able to do it by dynamic programming. That's my usual way of thinking about it. So the question really here, I think, comes down to is how do you order them from left to right to do something? So what is the ordering here? Okay. So I would think that the way you want to do this is you want to come up with an ordering of these things from left to right so we can write a recurrence on it. That's how I think about dynamic programs. Okay. So what is the right left to right order? By weight. By weight. Well, okay, no, you say increasing weight and decreasing IQ. Those are two separate things, right? So if you want to come up with a fixed order, what you're selling me is you want to sort the elephants by some way. Is that right? How do you want to sort them? You wanted to sort them yeah. from what? Um, for example, sort the, uh, sort the elephants by weight and then do the similar approval to the uh, longest increasing sequence. Okay, so first thing we are going to sort them which way by weight? Mm -hmm. Which way? Sorting by increasing or decreasing weight? Um, I think both are okay. Well, both are okay if you do the second thing okay. Okay? So let's think about it. So let's just, in order to, let's say, make this precise, what are we going to do? You're going to sort them by what way? You want to sort them by increasing weight or decreasing weight? Increasing weight. So here we've got them by weight. You're selling me, this is what our ordering is. Once we sorted them, those are ordered by weight. Now IQs are going to be random, right? And now what do you want? You want a decreasing sequence. Is this right? So one possibility is that you modify, okay, so now it says that what you want is a longest decreasing sequence. Is that right? Does everybody see that? That I think is what you want. Is that agreed? Now if you sorted them by order of reverse weight, do you want a longest increasing subsequence? Okay, so just to think about it now. Okay, we know how to compute the longest increase in subsequence because I uh, showed you the code for that last time, right? Could we make it longest increase in subsequence by simply sorting them but from highest weight to lowest weight? Would that make the problem of the IQ that we want longest increase in subsequence? That, is that right? To so make sure we got this straight here. So we could work it out, and probably it makes sense to think about working it out for longest decreasing subsequence. Um, we can do it if the IQ are different. Of so each other is the weight and IQ are unique. Wait, no, 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 no. So my question here is right now what he's saying is if I sort the we them by increasing weights and I find the longest decreasing subsequence, which in this case looks like a chunk, a chunk, a chunk. Okay? Then my problem reduces to writing an algorithm to find the longest decreasing subsequence of the IQs of this type. Right? Now, I claim I could have alternately done this by sorting the weights like this and then find the longest increasing subsequence. of IQs. Does that make sense? If I reverse this thing, any decreasing sequence that I get is an increasing subsequence. Does everybody see that? So if I had code for longest increasing subsequence, but not decreasing subsequence, the problem is solved by just simply changing how I sort the thing. Does everybody agree with that? But now, let's say we 
want to find longest decreasing subsequence. How do we go about doing it? They will want to propose a way of doing it. There are a couple different ways of doing this. Okay? How did you do it? Okay. How can we go and find the longest decreasing subsequence? Any ideas? There's two different approaches that I would say. They both sort of work out to... I think there are two different approaches that sort of, but don't exactly work out to the same thing. So let's talk about that. How would we find longest decreasing subsequence? They will want to make a proposal. Okay, how do we find it? Dynamic programming, fine. Dynamic programming is a method. Now my question is, how do you want to do it using dynamic programming? I can claim two different ways of doing it. Okay? One would be as a special case of edit distance, which I showed you last time. Right? How, did I, how would I do it as a special case of edit distance? Okay? Any ideas how I could do it by, as a special case of edit distance? Okay. So if I did it as edit distance, what were what were my our inputs to edit distance? I need to give it two sequences, S1 and S2. Is that right? What are my two sequences going to be? One of them we sort of agree would be the IQs according to, um, what would we call this thing? Uh, increasing weight. Does everybody agree that that's one of the sequences? What would another sequence for this be? If I want to make this an edit distance thing, here I'm giving as input the IQs themselves. What would be the other, the IQs according to the weight order? What would be the other order I might give it to? If I now consider basically decreasing IQ order, so it's sort, sort, sort IQs down. Decreasing. That's what we're saying here, right? If I do it this way, what's interesting about it? Okay? If I find what is the um, longest common subsequence between these two, I claim what's going to happen if these IQs are being matched, the IQs here are in terms of are they getting bigger or smaller, right? Um, if I find the longest common subsequence, that is going to be the longest collection of IQs from this order, such that they match in the same order in here, which means that they're decreasing. Does everybody agree with that? How many people see what I'm saying here? How many people don't see it? Okay to be brave here. Dynamic programming confuses people. But one thing that I claim here is that if I find the longest common subsequence of these two sequences, that will answer what I wanted. Right? This problem because the weak set is not unique. The IQ, what? The weak and IQ are not unique. You're saying the weights are not unique. Okay? Well then, how do we figure this out? How do we solve this problem? Boy, you're telling me that if the weights are not unique, that means the subsequence may not be the total, total difference. Because some part of it. Okay, so you're saying that does it have to be strictly increasing or not? Uh, it must be strictly increasing. But in this case, your result will not be strictly Okay, so how do we solve the problem of not making it strictly increasing? What would be the easiest way to do that?
How can I now, you see my approach of doing the, the, the uh, reducing it to, 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 to an edit distance. How do I take care of the fact, what he's concerned with is, that if there are three elephants here, there might very well be three elephants, three equally smart elephants. Is that right? Okay, if there are equally smart elephants, let's say all the elephants are equally smart. The longest common subsequence between these is going to be all the elephants, right? How can we admit, avoid that problem to make sure we don't use elef any elephant IQ more than once? Okay, so let's think about how we can solve this problem. It's a good question. The way I wanted to solve it was to remove duplicates from the sorted order of IQs, right? Does everybody agree that if I have two elephants here, which have um, the same IQ, if I remove the, if I make only one instance of the IQ here by removing duplicates, I will not have any duplicate with respect to sort IQ. You can solve the IQ problem, but not the weight, because weight is also not unique. Now you're telling me the weight problem is not unique, right? So how should I deal with the weight problem? That's an interesting question, okay? How can I make sure, you're trying to tell me I should not be allowed to use IQs of more than one weight. I could not be allowed to use more than one weight. Okay? How could we deal with that? Okay? Is there any other way that we might be able to solve that problem? Okay? And still leave it, let's say, an edit distance thing. One thing that I think I would do here is what if I had all the elephants of the same weight? What if I put their IQ in, I want to try, what if I put the IQ of all elements, let's say I have elephants of the same weight. What happens if instead, here I was supposed to be sorting the elephants by decreasing weight. What if when I came to a elephants of the same weight, I broke ties by inc putting them in increasing order of IQ. Does this solve my problem? Okay, maybe either increasing or decreasing. This is where I'm going to get confused. But what if I use my sorting with a second key? Right? I want to make it undesirable for you to take two elephants from the same weight. Right? I don't know which elephant is the desirable weight. Right? But if let's say I'm looking to come up with a decreasing IQ sequence. Actually, I think this is right. If I'm looking to find the longest decreasing IQ sequence. It cannot work because you may, you may get the, they may, the subsequence may longer. But you, because you increase in it, there are some IQ is extremely high and the, 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 I, the elephants after it will not be getting the subsequence. I see. Wait, so you're trying, okay, so what I wanted to try to say here is, I want to guarantee that you only pick one of these. That's really what I would like to have happen. Does everybody agree with that? From this pile of weights. And the way that I wanted to do it was to show that, um, well, let me just think about this for a second. I'm looking for a decreasing sequence of IQs, is that right? As long as possible. If I make the IQs of these guys increasing, put them in the order of increasing IQs, I want to claim, let me think about it, that I can't pick two of these. Does this make sense? It's in this way you cannot pick two of them. So now what I'm going to say is, um, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them sorted by weight. And if there's a tie of weight, I'm going to put them in an increasing order of IQs. 
Now when I come up with a match, because I've only got one weight instance of the weight here. Wait, actually, let me just think about this. No, I want to pick a selection of decreasing, the longest decreasing sequence. I don't know why I come up with a decreasing order of, of, of IQs. I cannot pick two elements with the same weight. Does everybody see that? So this is enough. Sorting according to the secondary key so by, by the IQ is enough to prevent me from picking any elephant more than once. Does everybody see that? Okay. So what I will do is I am going to allow constrain my IQs by only giving you single copies. Remove duplicates. Add these little break ties by using a secondary key. Okay? And if I do it this way, then in fact it is the longest common subsequence. How many people believe me now? Okay? And so this is the way I like to think about problems. I like to think about it in terms of if there's a higher order primitive I understand, can I change the data to my higher order primitive? Okay? And now I claim I can do it. It's still just sorting with a slightly higher comparison function. Okay? And it's still sorting here, but um, removing duplicates. Okay? Any questions about that? About the IQ, if the weight have some uh, IQ or oh, unique IQs you know, of, of the same weights, then the decrease IQ is some part of its weight, not in the subsequent. Wait, you're saying that if there is one weight that has lots of different IQs? Yeah, and they, those IQ, IQs are unique, but when you sort of decrease in it, those IQs may not in the subsequent. Wait, no, 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 so what are you concerned with? Are you cons concerned with elements of the same weight or elements of the same IQ? Uh, same weight has a lot of IQs. So you have a bunch of elephants here, all of which have the same weight, 300 pounds, but they have wildly different IQs. Yeah. What's going to happen? You saw them in the decreasing IQs. We sorted them in order of decreasing weight, but broke ties when they were of equal weight by sorting them by increasing IQ. Um, but the decreasing IQ sequence may not contain the uh, Result, uh, subsequence of the the decrease in IQ sequence is allowed now to pick any one of these elephants of that weight. Whichever one it wants to choose, okay? But it cannot pick two. Because if you use two of these weights, uh, can the, I write it? What? Can I write, write it? Write it, write it, show me. Uh, for instance, of course, um, of course, here you have a decrease in IQ. And here, for instance, we have 300 and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So here, we have decreasing numbers of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Again, like this. Right. But when you mention it, it's some part of this, one of this, and one of this. Okay, suppose, let's say, you're saying the input consists only of five elephants, each of which are weigh 300 pounds, but they have different Q, IQs. Is that right? Um, maybe we have more elephants. Well, okay, let us think about that the basic case that we're talking about. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to sort the IQs because the elephants share a weight. Within a weight class, we are going to go sort them according to increasing IQ. So the IQs are going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here, we're going to sort the IQs in inverse order. The IQs will be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, you can never match it. Well, you can match it. The longest common subsequence is going to be of length 1. Yeah. Okay, which means you can only get one elephant, which is exactly what you want to have happen. Right? Uh, but if you have more elephants, this will always be No, because now you have elephants that weigh 299 pounds and 301 pounds, okay? Those elephants are going to be before here and after here. The IQs are going to be interspersed here, okay? We are going to now want to have a decreasing order of IQ, you know, find a set of elephants. 
Uh, okay, where their IQs are decreasing. Because the IQs are increasing among these elephants, then these you're not gonna that will be what prevents you from picking more than one of them. Okay? Any questions about that? So the good thing about this is it's a special case of longest common subsequence. Okay? The bad part about it is maybe you think it requires clever, it requires the full edit distance thing. How would you compute longest common subsequence in a simpler way? Let's think about that now. Does someone want to give me a recurrence for longest common subsequence? Okay, or longest decreasing subsequence. Which one? Let's think about a special recurrence for it. Which one do people want to work on? Decreasing sequence or longest common subsequence? Let's say decreasing. Okay, that's the one that's maybe the more direct solution here. Okay, how do we formulate a recurrence relation for this? We start out, when I think about doing dynamic programming, I start out thinking, what is a function which would give me the answer? Okay? And one of that, and then I write it in English. LCS, or longest, actually it's longest decreasing subsequence, right? LDS. Sub something. What? Let's say sub i. I think that may all be all I need. Is going to be equal to the length of the longest decreasing sequence of elements 1 to i. Okay? Might that be my function? If I knew that, I need to know, is there a function here that I can write down? This is how you do dynamic programming. That it would give me the answer if I could do it. I think it's n sub i. What? Uh, the last uh, element. Well, let's try to see if we can do this one. You're telling me this isn't going to work. And if so, then we'll have to fix it. OK? But now what I'm going to try to do is to write a recurrence for it. It's clear that this would give me the answer. Because the answer that I want is LDS of n. If I had this function, this would give us the answer, right? Can I write a recurrence relation for this? How many will see what I mean by this, this definition? OK? Now let's propose a recurrence relation for it. Can we come up with the longest decreasing subsequence of um, i up to the ith position? We need it as a function of the previous versions. OK? And the problem is that well, let's think about it. what could our recurrence relation be? It is somehow going to be, if we want to know the length of the longest subsequence in this entire range, it is somehow going to be the max of LDS of I minus 1, because we could already have gotten a sequence up to that law, right? Plus, the longer sequence that includes the last element of our array. Let's say our array is, um, you know, our array is, you know, i, a, is our array. It's then got to be some function of the i element of our array. Does this element make for a longer subsequence? But it doesn't seem to. Because, well, we don't know, because we don't know what that sequence ended on. Is that right? This last element of the array, here we have our array of IQs, A. This ith value might extend the decreasing sequence, or it might not. 
Basically, it's going to be one more of the, than this if it extends it. But we don't know for sure whether it extends it. That's why this definition doesn't work. Any questions? So what am I going to do? I'm now going to change it to what's the length of the longest subsequence of a sub i, let's say, ending with a sub i. OK? Now what am I going to be telling me? Now it's going to be telling me, I know the longest subsequence. Here's L L C D S. OK, if my sequence was 1, 4, 2, OK, and this was 3, let's say, let's say 0. The longest decrease in sequence up to this point is of length 1. The longest decrease in sequence up to this point, well, it's still of length 1. Here I've got one of length 2. Here I've got one of length 3. Does everybody see that? Now then, what is this going to do? If I had this function, my answer is not going to be LDS sub n anymore. But what? What is my answer going to be? The max over all i from 1 to n of LDS sub i. That's what I would be looking for if I had this one, right? So that means that this definition is a good definition if I can come up with a recurrence for it. Everybody see that? Now, what is my recurrence definition here going to be? What is the length of the maximum sequence, subsequence, that ends in the ith position? Okay? It's the max over what? Over probably all j as it goes from 1 to i minus 1, all previous values, right? What is it going to be? I claim it would be a sub i, uh, a sub j, plus 1 if, okay, oh, no, no, it's LCS. If and only if, what? A sub i is less than A sub j. This I claim is my recurrence. And let's see if you understand it. Okay? The longest common subsequence, decreasing steam subsequence, ending up at the, including the ith element, is going to be the longest subsequence to the left of the ith element, which ends on a value bigger than a sub i. Because if so, I can make it longer by adding I to a sub i to that. Does everybody see that? How many people see this, what this recurrence is? How many people don't see it and want to see it? Raise your hands if you're in that category. Okay? So what's good about this is, so basically it says that if we have the longest subsequence ending at this point, it's going to be, it's only going to have to extend something, a subsequence that ended on a smaller value, okay, on a larger value. And we find what is the lar longest sequence ending on a larger value to the left of me. And if so, then that's how I extend it. Any questions about that? So this is the recurrence that I would use. And I think it is easy to program. What's the time complexity of this recurrence? N squared, if we're going to compute it, for this N, the way I think about a recurrence is a certain number of boxes, and there's a cost for filling each box. How many boxes do we have to evaluate? We have to evaluate LDS sub 1 till we get to LDS sub n. So there's n boxes. Each box is going to look at all value boxes before it 
So it's a linear amount of time per box times the linear number of boxes is n squared time, right? So it's not any faster than n at distance, but perhaps you find it simpler, okay? Any questions? So those are two different ways you can go about it. Do you see how we designed this dynamic programming recurrence? Okay, I think this is a good exercise if you haven't seen that before. Any questions about that? Why this works or how we went about designing it and why we fell into trouble with the first definition? Any questions? Okay, so if you do this thing, it'll tell you about elephants. Any other questions about LCS or elephants or anything like that? Okay, what is the second problem? Which was the second one? Weights and measures? Who's read this one? Who knows, who knows about this problem? Okay. Has anybody looked at this problem before and can tell me about it? Yes, you. Tell me about the problem. Given the turtle's weight and the spread, the weight stack that not get checked. The stack turtle. Okay. So this is a little bit like the other problem. In fact, maybe it's going to be so much like it. Let me erase everything I've had. Just so we don't look at confused looking at it again. But the problem is, again, we have an unordered universe of things initially. We have turtles. What do we know about each turtle? We should know two things about the turtles. What do we know about each turtle? The weight at its strength. The weight of it at its strength. And so here we've got a world where um, you've got a, so each turtle, turtle sub i, has a strength of i and a weight of i, right? An appropriate weight. We want a stack of turtles with what property? That every turtle be able to hold up the weight of everything that's on top of it plus its own weight. Is that right? So if I have a turtle here with a strength of 1,000 and a weight of, what, of 200, it can hold 800 pounds of other turtles on it, right? That's what I understand the problem to be. Okay? And the goal here is to build the largest turtle tower that you can. Okay? Correct? So how do we go about it? Can someone specify this as a dynamic programming thing? Or before you do that, it seems to me, how do you order the turtles so that the problem becomes interesting? I still don't see a left or right ordering of the turtles. You want to sort by the strength. So let's try what, see if that works. You want to say sort by, what is it? Increasing strength or decreasing strength? I think it's increasing of strength minus weight. Okay. What do you prefer? Let's take a look at what we're proposing. So there's a choice of increasing and decreasing. There's a choice of strength or residual strength. Right? Strength minus my own weight. Right? So which do we want to think about first? Let's try it. Increasing or decreasing? Which do we want them sorted by? You want to sort by decreasing. And what do you want? Strength or residual strength? We'll take a vote here. Who says we sort by decreasing strength? Raise your hand if you believe in decreasing strength. One decreasing strength. Who here believes in decreasing residual strength? One decreasing residual strength. Does anybody want to break a tie? Okay. Let's try strength for now. Okay. And now what do you want to do with that? Now that you've got the turtles ordered in terms of decreasing power, what is it that you want to do? Dynamic program to do what? Uh, 
Okay? I don't quite see yet how to do this. Okay? Any ideas of how we want to look at it? It's still pretty nebulous here. Okay? How do we do it? First of all, let me just tell you that I normally think about doing things from left to right. I don't know, culturally, is that the same here? Or do you guys think about things doing from right to left? Left to right is how I usually think about these. Okay? Although, in, in China, actually, in Chinese, you write from left to right or right to left? <laughs> Which way? Ancient ways, right to left, but nowadays we write from left. Okay, so since we're doing it today, we'll go from left to right. So only the reason why you did it, by the way, in the old days, from right to left, had to do it now you write with a pen. And most people are, are right-handed, so you don't want the ink to smear you. In the old days, you were cutting things out of a stone chisel, right? And it was somehow easier for you to bang it out like this. That was what I was told, okay? But anyway... So we're sorting the left to right by decreasing strength. And that's an argument, though, that you're building your stack from bottom up. Do you want to build it from bottom up or from top up? That seems like another way to think about it, right? Do you want to build the stack like this, or do you want to build the stack like that? Which way? Bottom up. What? Bottom up. You think you want to build the stack like this, uh, okay? Uh, up to bottom, I mean, the recursive formula will be bottom. Okay, I'm not sure I understand that, what, what you're saying right now. I think I would want to build my stack like this, not like this. You know why? Because it somehow would say that, that the choice of, you're sort of assuming somehow that if you're building it bottom up, the choice of what you're doing up top has no impact on how desirable the bottom is. And that seems to me to be less clear. Because I think that these guys are a complete stack. So if you want to do a recursive thing to make it in terms of something smaller, I think that that's probably a better way to think about it. Can be solved in any of you. You do the bottom. Oh. Gradient. Uh, it, 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 there is some way to solve. Uh, I solve it. Okay. There may be different. No, no. There may be different ways to think about this. Okay. So either you guys are going to propose a recurrence, or I'm going to have to walk through it. Okay. So I don't mind you leading me in my direction. But how do you propose to do it then? Then what is your function? The way I think about it is you're cons constructing some kind of a f of something that you're going to write out in English, right? Yes. What is your f of something? You can come up here if you wish. in English, just because that's how I want to do it. If I understand what your function is, f sub i j is going to be the, what is it, the weight of the, is it a weight? No, 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 it's the, uh, the maximum weight left. The, I see, the max residual capacity, wait. Okay. Uh, how, in how much? Uh, uh, how heavy the the turtles can I put it on? Wait. Okay. So you're saying that you're you're building it from the bottom. Is that right? Yes. 
So you want to know is how much weight, what's the maximum weight you can put on this without crushing any of these turtles? Is yeah. that right? Yes. Okay, so let's, let's go and write that down just to make sure we understand it. The max, um, let's say, remaining weight in a tower of height J from turtles T1 dot 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 TI. Is that right? Yes. Okay, now I understand what this is doing. Would this answer our problem if we knew how to compute this? What would be the right answer that we want? Okay. If we know how to compute this, would this give us what the tallest stack of turtles is? What would it be? Um, how would we compute the tallest stack of turtles using this function if it existed? If, if this exists, it means J exists. So uh, you, you only find a, a lot of J. So you would say basically it would be the the max, the, basically that, that the final answer, what you would like to know, is um, you would like to know um, something to the effect, the R the max, okay, the maximum value of J, right, such that F sub N comma J is greater than um, zero. zero. Uh, well, greater than, you may say greater than or equal to, we'll have a question mark, but it's something like this, right? If this is going to be computed, the maximum remaining weight, well, the question is, does zero mean that there's, the question is, you would want to, for this to work, you'd want to make it negative if the turtles are already crushed, right? Assuming this function is negative for turtles that are crushed, right? then this would be the right answer with the greater than or equal to. You agree? Yes. Okay. Now show me how you're going to compute this. Okay. Does anybody else, by the way, have a different approach for this one? You can have you write, writing in parallel on the other side of the board. Okay.
Okay, let's take a look at his and see if we agree with it. Okay? What you're saying here is if we believe it, you're telling me that the, the maximum remaining weight tower, remaining weight of a tower of J turtles from the first I turtles is either um, I minus 1J, meaning that we are not going to use, um, what do you call it, the, uh, we're not going to use the, the I turtle, right? That's what that would say. Or, if we do use the ith turtle, what is this saying here? Okay. Expl okay, so explain this to me because I'm not seeing this now. Mm. This is the uh, weight that, uh, how much weight you can put in one unit. How much weight, this is how much weight, I see, how much weight and remains. And this is the weight of the current turtle. Uh, if this is less than or equal to it, I can put it on. Oh, and also, uh, it, 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 it must be uh, smaller or equal than this on the string. Okay, let's just think about this thing. Okay? Uh, SI, what's the SI? Uh, uh, the string. string. Okay. So first of all, the weight of the eye turtle has got to be less than or equal to the strength of the eye turtle. Right? But this means that the turtle, a, a turtle that we, that's weight is greater than its strength is a completely useless turtle, right? It is a pre-crushed turtle, <laughs> right? So this is the case of the pre-crushed turtle. Um, what you're saying here is the key constraint here is um, if there is one less, right, if there's a, a tower of height one less than J, which, um, I see. Well, okay, right. So we want to have a tower of height J, and we're going to use the J turtle. Then basically we're going to have to start with a tower of height J minus 1, using up the turtle I minus 1. And the weight of it would be, okay, the, the weight that we had free before minus the current weight. Okay, the weight that we're adding to that turtle stack. Does everybody agree with that? So this is not an unreasonable condition. What's this condition? Okay, the strength of I minus WI. Why do we need this again? You must consider, you must consider this on uh, this. Wait, are you putting the turtle on top or on bottom? Top. So this is again, if it's if this is going to be trivially satisfied, if you've got a pre-crushed, non-pre-crushed turtle. Is that right? Yes. But here we can, the, the, the turtle on the top can hold how much, and the turtle... Right, but what, so what I think what you're arguing here is, what I want to argue is if I deleted all pre-crushed turtles to simplify the thing, mm -hmm. okay. right? This is a pre-crushed turtle. If I delete this, can this come up? Does this still need to be part of the... Uh, Oh, 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 right, this is the capacity of the turtle, right? When you're telling me the limiting of the capacity could be a turtle below is in danger of being crushed, or a top turtle is in danger of being crushed. Does everybody agree with that? And this seems like a reasonable thing now, okay? But what was the order that you sorted these things by? And first solved by the strength, and then solved the and uh, the and the second element is the weight, and the weight is uh, in so according to your thing, you're saying that 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 the turtles should be ordered by strength. So the, the question is really this that that you're arguing, just to see whether your your occurrence makes sense, provided the order of the turtles that you're giving it is the order that they have to appear in, in the optimal solution. Does everybody see that? And this is what I'm now questioning. You're arguing that if we look at any tower of turtles, your argument is that they are in order of increasing raw strength. Is that right? As opposed to residual strength. 
Okay. Let's just think if this makes sense now. Okay. So, okay. So we agree that sorting the turtles by strength. So here I've got a turtle that has a strength of, um, let's say, a 2,000 pounds. And here's another turtle of like 2,000 pounds. If this has a residual strength of, this turtle is, has a, a carrying weight of um, 100, and this turtle has a carrying weight of, oh wait, so my question is, we sort them just by strength. If there's ties, can we go wrong? Right now, your order would not have had any difference about what their residual strength is. Uh, if, the, if the strength is equal, uh, I think it's the, um, the light, the, the smaller one. Is just the okay, so what I don't see here, though, is an argument now, a proof, that sorting them by strength is enough. Because I don't believe it is enough. Let's actually come up with a proof of that. If they are equally weighted, okay? If you have turtles that are uh, of equal strength, does any order of the weights for them suffice? Let's think about this for a second. Okay? Just trying to think for myself. I guess any order would suffice, right? The important thing is that the sum of these weights total up to less than a thousand. So you're not forbidding yourself. One thing that's interesting with this is that you're not forbidding yourself. In the case of thighs, no order seems to be wrong. So the question is, why is strength the right order as opposed to residual strength? That was our initial idea somehow. And the argument would have been... Uh, if, there are, uh, if there are two solutions, uh, if there are a solution which the, the uh, larger string is on the, on the top and you can swap it with the, uh, <coughs> swap it with the, um, the lower one and, and this you name it, it still will be on. So, so your argument, your proof would be that if here we have a turtle, which if they tell me this is the optimal order, and here I've got a turtle with a, a particular strength S sub I, and you know um, weight W sub I. Your claim that is that if I swap it with a turtle here of S sub J W sub J, these are eyes. Okay. That if this is a stronger turtle, if S sub I is bigger than S sub J, there is going to be no harm in swapping those turtles. And I don't believe that that's true. Because if you notice this thing, this turtle could be, this turtle could weigh, have a strength of 2,000 pounds. This turtle could have a strength of 1,900 pounds, right? But this turtle could weigh, okay, 1,900 pounds. Uh, this turtle could weigh 10 pounds. And this turtle could weigh 1,800 pounds. The act of swapping these turtles. The act of swapping these turtles. No. This turtle, putting the heavier turtle up here, will squash, squash all of these intermediate turtles. Well, because you can put it's only 100. What? You can only put 100 uh, on this top. But here you purpose. can put uh, 1990 on this top. Uh, Wait, no, 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 no. If you have them sorted by strength, then by definition, you're saying that the stronger turtles Oh, wait a second. Let me just think with it. You're telling me that in every case, the optimal solution is going to be that there is a stronger turtle on the bottom. Okay? 
that the strong that, that the sword turtles are ordered in terms of strength. And that's what I'm not believing now. Because here you've got a, a turtle that is oh wait. What, what, what am I trying to argue here? Okay, you're trying to are you trying to claim that the turtles, by definition, in the optimal pyramid, the turtles are organized by ordered by their strength. And I don't believe that. Because here you've got a case where you've got a turtle that is, you know, very strong. Okay, let's say uh, it's not as strong. 1900. But is a very heavy turtle. Okay? I want to claim you cannot swap this turtle with that turtle. Because this turtle, this turtle will not be upset. But all the intermediate turtles will be unhappy. That's what I'm trying to claim. How many people believe me with this? How many people don't believe me yet? Okay? So he has sorted, claimed, I am sorting the turtles. This is a right criteria. If the turtles have to appear in the order that he's given us, that, that the input left the right order, then his recurrence is right. He is telling me, though, the turtles need to be ordered according to strength, so that the strongest turtle is on the bottom. Okay? And I claim that that is not true. I can construct an example where, let me try to construct a convincing example here. Here we've got a heavy turtle, very strong, macho turtle, that only weighs 10 pounds. Okay? Here we've got a weak turtle, okay, that can only hold 20 pounds. Okay? That is, um, what you call it, uh, has a weight of, t of 10. Actually, and I guess there's some other turtle here, um, which would uh, maybe be five and five, right? I guess that's quite. Okay, I'm not, okay, my example is. Give me a good example. Somebody see what I'm saying here. Give me the good example. Uh, like, Give me three turtles with the property that we want. So give me a third turtle. You need a third turtle, I think you need to do it. Right, so here is, you're telling me, here are three turtles. This one has room to hold that turtle. This room has room to hold all three turtles. So this is a legal order. But on the other hand, if we reverse the ordering of it, which turtle is going to be unhappy? It's not clear that the third, you haven't made anybody unhappy yet. You need to show me which turtle. You want to swap this to this turtle of time. No, 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 but, but the question really is, if he gives me the turtle sorted by this, is it that I can't build a tower that is as good? That is the counter example that we need. Does everybody see that? So let's see if we can come up, can anyone come up with a counter example here? I want to come up with an input example. Everybody think about this. This is good practice. Okay? Either it's true or either what I'm saying is true or it's not true. If it's true, we should be able to come up with a set of turtles organized, ordered by strength, such that there is a better way to do it. Okay? So what am I trying to say here? Let me think for a minute. And if you guys come up with the example, let me know. But
come up with a counterexample. Do you want to now come up with a proof that you're correct? Okay? We agree this issue has to be resolved. Okay? And you know, let's try to work out a resolution for next class. We're running a little low. Unless you have a question. Um, <coughs> I've tried it before. I use this method, it's okay, but that method is not okay. So I trust this method, just the, the order of the uh, uh, string is okay, but that one is not okay. Okay, so what you're telling me is you've tried both, and this passed the judge and this didn't. Okay? And that might be, if that's true, that might very well be true. If so, you need to give me a proof of correctness, though. That's really the interesting question here. Okay? We agree that the recurrence is right. None of us are debating about the recurrence. The only issue is what is the right order of the turtles? Does everybody agree with that? And see that with dynamic programming, you need the left to right order. The left to right order has to be right. Okay? And my intuition, frankly, was it was residual strength that mattered. But my intuition might be wrong. Okay? And that's really what we're talking about here. Any questions? Okay? What about another problem? Let's look at another one. That was interesting. Unidirectional TSP. How many people have tried this one? Okay? This one actually looks pretty easy. How many people have tried this one? Anyone want to tell me about this problem? Okay. This problem asks us, given a cylinder of numbers, we want to walk from left to right across the cylinder of numbers. Okay. Where we are allowed to go either to the left, to the right, I mean, either, either go to the right, up one, or down one. Okay? And we want to find what? The lowest course path from this end of the cylinder to that end of the cylinder? Is that what the problem is? How do we solve this problem? Just use the dynamic program from left to right and calculate the uh, uh, total, minimum total weight, uh, total uh, minimum path, yeah. Okay, so the first thing to note here is this could this be solved as a shortest path problem on a graph? What? Could it be solved as a shortest path problem on a graph? I claim the answer is yes. Where, what is our graph? A source and a sink. It's a directed graph, right? Where I can go from here to either this vertex to either this or this or this and it will cost me that much. Does everybody agree this could have been written as a, as a shortest path problem on a graph? But why is that a bad solution? Okay? The claim somehow is this matrix-like thing means it should be easier to do as dynamic programming. What is the dynamic program? If I want to write this thing out as a dynamic programming, what is the dynamic program? I would be writing it as what? C sub i j is what? The min cost path to square i j. Does that make sense? And if so, what is the recurrence that we want? C sub ij is equal to what? What is it equal to? Min of what? I should have C. I plus one. C? What's, is this row or column? J is the column, right? So it seems like I minus 1, I, I plus 1, right? All from the previous column, is that right? Right? It's the cost of getting there plus what? The weight of the square IJ. Or I minus 1, J minus 1, I 
J minus 1. This is a recurrence. And once we have that, that will give us the, the, the weight, maximum weight for every square at the end. We take the minimum of those and we're done. Any questions? So the interesting thing here is that the dynamic programming is easier than the shortest path. Okay, it's a special case here. We could have done this with Dijkstra's algorithm, but why bother? Any questions? And the final one, this let's talk about a little bit, is the ferry loading problem. How many people have got this one working? How many people tried and didn't? Okay, now tell me about the ferry loading problem. What is it and how do we do it? You see it? Okay, okay, come. Okay, let me tell you what it is, okay? Just to double check this. We are given as input what? We are given as input. We are given as input, I gather, um, a size of the boat in meters. Is that right? We are given a bunch of boats. And we want it, these are measured in what? Centimeters? Yes. Okay, and I guess centimeters means this. Is this right? Is that how I do it? Wait, no. Is that right what it is? Now everything's in meters. Is that right? Now what we want to do is to assign the cars either to the left or the right, which I think means port or starboard. That sort of nautical terms, right? Sort of like pirate. Okay? Nautical term. What do we want to do? We want to now decide which boat should go on which side so as to what? Minimize the height of the ship. Is that right? The size of the ship we need to do it. Or no? What we want to do is to what? We want to try to, to maximize how many of the, of, the, of the first cars we can fit. Is that right? That's interesting now. We're not allowed, according to this, to say, oh, I'd like to take you two, but not this guy. Right? They're waiting in line, and they will get angry if you ask them to leave. Right? Now, how do we do it? Uh, binary search. Binary search. What does binary search mean? Uh, binary search to find the uh, maximum, the maximum first car ships. Right. So what it's saying here is you're only allowed to go port or starboard. You're only allowed to make a prefix of this. Yes. And the real question, I guess, is, is what is the longest prefix such that all these cars can fit on the boat if you assign them properly, right? Okay? How do we make this a dynamic programming problem? You're telling me we don't make it a dynamic programming problem. Is that what you're telling me? Um, and then I use dynamic programming to see if the first, uh, the prefix of the shifts can make it into the uh, all, all stop all. Okay. Not sure I, I'm not sure I understand this yet, okay? How do we do it now? If I need to do it in my way of doing it, I want a function definition. What is my dynamic programming function? Because of the fire drill, we'll give it an extra minute or two, and then I promise I'll let you. What? F i j means... Uh, F sub i j means what? Uh, for the first i... I uh, is it possible to uh, put the first ice ships into the uh, pole or star pole while the while the uh, the way of port is changing? I see. So what you're going to say here is the two arguments are: is this a Boolean thing? Yeah, yes. Is a Boolean? function he's talking about, right? Can ships, basically cars, C1 dot 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 CI be packed 
right? Where um, J units remain on the starboard side. Okay? That's what he's telling us now, right? Now, why does he tell us about just the starboard side? Why don't you need to know how much is on the le on the port side? Um, the, the sum of, of this plus minus of J is... Because the sum of, right, because basically this is a prefix, the sum of the length of C, the lengths of the cars, of the first I cars, okay, minus this value J is going to give us what's on the left side. Is that right? Does everybody see what he's doing now? This recurrence looks a little different than what we are talking about before. This here is an index. What car? And this is how much space remains. Okay? And now let's think about it. What is the recurrence to compute it? What is, how do you compute what F sub IJ is? F sub i j, there is a way to pack the first i cars so that there's j rooms starboard here. Under what conditions? What is my recurrence here going to be? Um, there are two cases. Um, one is the i car is put into the, the pole. And in that case, uh, it is F i minus 1 uh, and j. This says that if you put it on the other side, okay, we can do it if, this is true, we can put it on the other side under what condition? Uh, the i is so now you're putting, this is, this is the, 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 the uh, starboard side, this is the port side, you can put it on this side. You can put it on that side under what condition? There has to be enough room on that side. Uh, yes, yes. So how do you tell what, measure what that room is on that side? Uh. It's going to be something about the sum, sum okay? The sum of all the uh, car sizes so far, right? Minus the garbage that's sitting on the port side, right? Plus the weight of the ith car has got to be less than or equal to the capacity. Does agree with that? And what about if it goes on the starboard side? Right? If, provided basically, and this is true if J is less than or equal to the capacity, right? We still can't put it if it's too big. And, and J at least, at least bigger than CI. J is bigger than CI. Well, basically, but it's a question of getting boundary conditions. This is an or because it's a Boolean thing, right? And basically, this is saying if we can put it on the other side and it doesn't exceed the capacity, that's fine. Or if we put it on the left side, we have to have a way to have put, gotten things where we have, we have J minus the capacity of that before we did it. Does everybody agree with it? With the appropriate boundary conditions, this is the answer. Okay? Any questions about that? Okay. Think about these, play with them, good luck, and we'll talk about geometry, not grids, next class. Okay? Thanks for your attention.